Nick and I met way long ago. Mutual friends introduced us. You were smitten about me. Yep, and you Denied deterred you. my affection. Made you work for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we went to the Phillies World, Ch uh, World Series Championship Parade, and uh, I kissed you. And the rest is history. Uh, we had ourselves a Phillies-themed wedding, and... It was a home run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have two children, two boys. Ages four and five. We love them. Nick and I decided to look for a new home when we were ready to buy our first home, and we actually didn't have Brookhaven on our radar, and we accidentally stumbled upon it. And fell in love with it. One day, we found out that a pipeline was coming, and we didn't realize how close it was. Friends of ours had mentioned it at a gathering, and we came home that night, and I Google searched it to see just how close we might be to this thing, and came away with no definitive information, blurry maps, and no mention of Brookhaven, and we really thought we were in the clear from being directly affected by, by this. In Brookhaven, we were expecting road closures on Chester Creek Road for a sewage project. And when we heard that the road was going to be closed for so long, it was, it was uncomfortable, but we kept on being told that it was a sewage project. And then we, coming out of our development, made a right turn, and all of a sudden there were flaggers. And I thought, oh, wow, this is quite a sewage project, but there were sandbags and pumps and hoses. And we knew that that was not something typical for a sewage project. And... I called some people that I had seen on Facebook who were involved with Sunoco and I said, I think this is to do with the pipeline. And when I made a phone call to uh, my state rep, she confirmed that Sunoco truly was in Brookhaven and the HDD drilling caused a leak in our creek. We never heard anything from our local government from our local borough. We never heard anything that this was, in fact, Sunoco, that they were going to be here. In fact, their initial response to our inquiries was that it's not a Brookhaven problem, that we weren't um, directly involved or anything. When we contacted the council supervisors, I felt that there was a quick response for me to call Sunoco, call the hotline number, and let them know my concerns. They, uh, it was actually surprising to me that the people I was calling in my borough didn't have answers for me, that they were telling me to call Sunoco and get answers. And that was a, a red flag to me that this is something that I need to, to stay alert to. It's hard as a resident to decipher who is really mm -hmm. working with us and who is really being, um, giving us lip service. Speak, lip service. I felt uh, let down, I guess you could say, that they weren't aware. And we came to find out later that as this occurred down at the creek, Sunoco failed to notify our, our borough. Um, 10 days. 10 days, I believe. It took before they actually formally reached out to our borough. They had already had boots on the ground down there dealing with their uh, leak and had failed to reach out to our, our local government to let them know what was going on. We are told that a lot, uh, over 20,000 gallons were released inadvertently, and they were only able to recover 500 gallons of that, so who knows where the rest of it is. My understanding and best approximation is that our 
houses with somewhere between 650 and 800 feet of where that pipeline runs under the creek. We are petrified. Yeah. Going to the swim club, club is something we look forward to. For the last two years, seeing the kids enjoy that place that we can spend an entire day. And when we found out that Sunoco was renting the property of the place that we consider to be our second vacation home, of <laughs> where we spend a lot of time watching mm -hmm. our children um, grow and then seeing and hearing the company there so close to where we make memories with our kids. These are not the memories we anticipated when we became members. The thought that something could happen in the pipeline while we are at the swim club is very scary. Scary enough that I had a conversation with someone who works for Sunoco when they visited Brookhaven for the one meeting they came. And I said, if I'm at the swim club and I see a cloud that's not really visible, but something looks strange, should I put my kids in the minivan and buckle them up and drive through? And the man who had the answers, the Sunoco man who was sent to us for answers said, absolutely not, ma'am, don't drive away. You'll ignite it. You'll ignite the, the release of the vapor cloud. The vapor cloud. This is not okay. So a lot of the things that I'm seeing on a regular basis down at the creek are sandbag structures, and then it rains, and then those sandbags get washed away, and then they have to redo them. And then we see the workers with respiratory masks, but we're told this is really okay, that this material is not a problem. And so I see things, and I read things, and I have to come to my own conclusion that I'm not being told everything. So I make the, some phone calls. And And I've called the DEP who says this is something that they wouldn't really be in charge of. I need to call someone else. So then I would call another number that they have put me in contact with. And that person took my questions and concerns and sent me an email saying, I'm sending your questions and concerns to the DEP. So everyone is throwing this ball back and forth and no one wants to have a glove to catch it. It's easy to believe that someone is taking care of things, but it's my understanding the DEP has not taken samples of that drilling fluid. It's my understanding that the water has not been tested. And it's my understanding that this can continue to go on until the DEP pulls the permits. When I'm told to call the Sunoco hotline, and I have a log of how often I've called them, but they just take your number and your information and then they say someone will call you back. And that person who calls back is someone who Sunoco has hired from a PR firm whose advertising for that firm is when you keep doing everything but you're still not winning. That's the Bravo company, that's their tagline. And the person who has called me back has lied to me several times on the phone. The first lie was that Brookhaven knew, and we came to find out 23 days later that Brookhaven was never formally told. Lie number two is um, <laughs> the person couldn't give me answers because she was driving, and then five minutes later asked me what my email was. She wanted to write it down so she could email me something. I think she forgot she was driving. They lied about the drill, the HD, the actual physical drill, the HDD drill. We were told it's not in Brookhaven, it wouldn't be in Brookhaven, we're not drilling in Brookhaven, and yet the, drill's I, in Brookhaven. the drill was in Brookhaven. I took a picture of it parked along Chester, along Chester Creek Road, and I, was, I, I researched it. I'm like, Did this, is this a drill? And the, it was an Ingersoll Rand, and there was the model number that was on it, and I looked it up, and sure enough, it, Ingersoll Rand's PDF information on this piece of machinery was that it is an HDD drill. Yeah, another lie was um, I was driving out of the development and I saw one of the pumps that they use for collecting the drilling fluid was leaking and there was a man standing there with um, white pads underneath 
and it struck me and alarmed me into something that shouldn't be happening. So I called the borough and left a message. I called the Sunoco hotline and left a message because they just take your information. And I did not receive a phone call back, which I thought was, was standard procedure. That it was something, this was a good three weeks into the project of, of Brookhaven's involvement. And then I found out an hour later, I got an email back from the PR firm saying, I must be mistaken. There's nothing wrong with their equipment. There, there's lawnmower activity going on down there. Yes. That, um, so when I, I did an email back, I called again the actual person's phone number, who I had been in contact with several times. And now I felt that I was being um, taken advantage of. And so when I called back and said, it wasn't a lawnmower. If, if someone is hooking up their lawnmower equipment to Sunoco, then you're really not watching your material. This is your equipment and it is spilling something on the creek bed. And again, there was a denial. There was saying that there could be vandal vandals in Brookhaven, which I took very, very much offense to because I feel like Brookhaven has given them a lot of flexibility with being here in our town without any answers. And we even forgave them, some people, for not telling us. Um, came to find out 12 days after that that Sunoco put out information that they truly did have a diesel release uh, from their equipment had failed and diesel was released onto the creek bed area. Days after that incident, that incident occurred over a weekend and then the following week we had a council workshop where Sunoco and the DEP were present for and this person from the PR firm was there also and again we brought this up and this time the answer was well, we removed that piece of machinery from your site. We pointed out that it was no longer there. We said, we called and reported this machinery leaking on the road. And a day later, it was gone. Mm -hmm. First, we were told we were confused that it wasn't any machinery of theirs and that we must have it confused with local lawn service activity in the area. And then at the meeting, we were told that no, you called and said it was an eyesore, and we removed it from your vision. We, it's, it's still there. It's still sitting. It's still there. We just removed it from your vision, and it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just, it's laughable that they think these answers are acceptable. Not being angry and not putting on a face of anger comes from my need to to deal with this and I have to, I don't know how to. I, 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 I'm angry, but I don't want that to dominate how I behave in moving forward in this. And we have hope that things will be better, things will get better, that people will make the right changes and make the right decisions. And I don't want to taint that or taint our involvement and become the angry people that are pushing, pushing this. We've had a lot of nights of just crying and debating on whether we're going to move. How to handle this moving forward. And where do you go in the state that's not making it safe for you, where your government is not protecting you? Where do you go? So if we don't want to go, we're going to make it work here. And we're going to make our own local government answer to us and give us the reassurance that they do have our best interests for us and our children and our community because at the end of the day, we put them in that position to speak for us, and that's their job and I'm gonna make sure that they're doing their job. I can't bear to just roll over because somebody else is gonna dictate to us okay. how things are gonna be. No, love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up.